All right. Well, thank you. Um, just one, you called the title of the book Prophet Muhammad, Prophet of Peace amid clash of uh, empires. Like what features of Prophet Muhammad's, you know, uh, teaching or his actions, his character, what makes him peaceful? Uh, so, uh, peace is a important theme throughout the Quran. Now, I don't want to blow my own horn too much, but uh, despite the importance of peace throughout the Quran, I think mine is the first book that systematically traces the concepts having to do with peace in the Quran all the way through. Uh, the scripture. Uh, and I cannot understand uh, why that is. Um, so in the Mecca period, as you mentioned, the prophet was preaching 610 to 622 in Mecca. Uh, the, uh, there are verses that say things like this. Uh, they say, uh, if anybody is taunting and harassing you, wish them peace. Say assalamu mm -hmm. alaikum. And you know, assalamu alaikum or peace be upon you is a prayer. It's a request mm -hmm. that God should bestow peace on somebody. So the Quran uh, uh, says that um, the, the believers around Muhammad uh, walk humbly upon the earth. And when they are harassed or taunted uh, by uh, uh, the rowdy, you know, the word is uh, jahil, which literally means ignorant, but it has the implication out of control, without any self-control. Uh, when when they're bothered by those people, they wish them peace. Um, then, in later in the Meccan period, uh, the Quran goes beyond uh, this idea of wishing peace on your enemies. Uh, and it goes beyond anything in, in the Sermon on the Mount of, of Jesus in the Gospels. And it says that, um, that you should uh, respond to the evil done you with the greater good. Hmm. You should do the greater good to those people who do evil to you. Uh, and uh, this is a, a very remarkable uh, yeah, teaching. Exact, exact verse is uh, goodness and evil are not the same. Repel evil with goodness. For your enemy may be your bosom friend. That's the... Yeah, it, uh, it, it's, it says that one of the reasons to behave in this way is that you will uh, transform your enemy. Uh, into, uh, I would translate it as a patron, uh, but in any case, a supporter uh, and a What about the, the one, uh, what about the Medina period? Because that's when ho there's open hostility, there's wars happen. Um, like how does Prophet Muhammad stay a prophet of peace, even though he's involved in, you know, open warfare? Well, um, first of all, uh, you know, I think that there's a difference between interpersonal ethics, which is what's being preached in the Mecca period. Uh, how would you as an individual respond to people who were harassing you? Uh, there's a difference between that and uh, statesmanship. Uh, in the Mecca period, the Muslim community was had no state, they had no political authority. And the Quran reminds them of this uh, over and over again. It says, you don't have any sultan or, or uh, sovereignty. You don't have, you're not musator over anybody. You're not uh, uh, controlling anybody, you're not ruling anybody. Uh, and it's uh, one of the reasons given for which they should respond in these mild and meek ways in an interpersonal way. But in the Medina period, uh, a state is formed around the prophet, uh, a kind of state. And that state is under attack as in my reading. Uh, and uh, the Quran is insistent that 
uh, if you are attacked, you should defend yourself. Uh, and that leads to war. But what's the purpose of the war? Uh, the Quran says uh, you may fight in self-defense, uh, but you, you must not become an aggressor. Uh, you not, must not exceed the bounds. Uh, and so defensive war is permitted, but not offensive war. Well, a defensive war is an attempt to uh, go back to the status quo ante and to achieve peace. Uh, an offensive war is warmongering. It's, it's, it's a, you can have a forever war as the Romans and the Persians did. Uh, but uh, the Quran is not striving for that. It's striving for a limited uh, defensive war, which intends to restore peace. Uh, and it says so. Uh, and it says in the Surah Anfal, in the chapter of spoils, uh, it says that if the enemy sues for peace, you must accept their, their request. Well, just think about it logically for a second. If you were fighting an aggressive war, wouldn't your enemy always sue for peace? I mean, if you mm -hmm. attacked somebody and you had made progress against them, they would say, yes, yes, please, let's have peace. They would want to draw a line and stop you from coming for them. Uh, and if you accepted that, then you'd never make any progress in your aggressive war. The only logical explanation for the Quran's instruction that you must always make peace if the enemy sues for it is that it's fighting a that Muslims are fighting a defensive war. And uh, that if the enemy calls it off, it stops attacking, then of course, you will go back to peace. Uh, so yeah, or they, they could be in a, uh, they could be fighting a defensive war and they're winning, the, overcoming the enemy, and they're now in a position of possible aggression, and uh, and that's when the other side would sue for peace. And the Quran is kind of saying, well, you can't go the limits, uh, yeah. and then you must accept peace at the point of being powerful and victorious. And that's a true test, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes, that's right. And uh, the other thing to say about all this is that there's a lot of criticism of Islam uh, for uh, the Quran having these verses about war. Uh, but as I mentioned, verses about war are all over the Bible and nobody seems to mind that. Uh, but uh, also the Christian ethics of the time of the prophet were very similar. So uh, St. Augustine uh, uh, taught uh, that there was such a thing as a just war. Uh, and uh, what he says about just war, actually, it would be a very interesting journal article to set his ideas about just war uh, next to uh, the passages in the Quran about war, because I think they're very, very similar. Uh, and then St. Yeah. Ambrose, uh, one of the church fathers, said that, you know, if you stand idly by while an aggressor comes and harms an innocent, a child, a woman, a non-combatant, uh, then you're as bad as the aggressor. So St. Ambrose mm -hmm. thought that the only way to be a good Christian would be to be willing to fight defensive wars. And by the time he was speaking, of course, the Roman Empire had become Christian. And so the whole Roman army was in the service of Christianity. Uh, and so um, I don't find uh, that the ethics in the mm. Quran are more warlike than its contemporary uh, uh, Christian church fathers. And in fact, it's less warlike because uh, uh, Augustine, I think, allows for aggressive war in a way that the Quran does not.